some of you polite viewers asked me if I could play other games. So welcome to Pokemon Aloha Pika Pika gameplay. Yet another Pokemon gacha game, but with different 6 vs 6 battle style. If you want to download this game, the links will be in the description as always. The challenge that I put to myself will be to play this game for 7 days and see how far I can get without knowing anything about it. So without further ado, let's get into day 1. Just like any other Pokemon gacha game or any Pokemon game in general, you are thrown into a battle just so that you learn how the Pokemon battle mechanics work in this game. Keep in mind, this is my first time ever that I'm playing a gacha game that has a 6 versus 6 battle mechanic, so I was very confused at the start. Everything was automatic, I had no idea what was going on, I was like, okay, maybe this is part of the tutorial, everything is automatic, what is going on? Still very confused and some missions later I got myself a mudkip. With this, I started learning the basics of powering up a Pokemon, and I noticed that some missions actually have like cutscenes from the original Pokemon anime franchise, which I will be honest, I did not pay much attention to the story of the game, I just wanted to play the game itself, so if you guys are into stories and whatever, uh, well, try to pay attention maybe. The game gave me my third team member, Bulbasaur, which is also an S tier, which uh, just made the game much easier. Also, I started to understand a little bit of how this 6 vs 6 works. It had like a little tutorial as well to just explain to me like, hey, the Pokemons will attack what is directly in front of them. So I was like, oh, okay, this makes sense. So in teams of 6 vs 6, this can actually be cool once you have like a full team, which I was still far away from. And apparently while doing your quests, you can also find boss Pokemon. These Pokemons are part of the quest, so it's Pokemon that you have to defeat in order to proceed with your missions. They don't have anything special, they are just stronger apparently. Shortly after, I get my fourth Pokemon, so I get 10 new mole shards, which I am able to summon a new mole. Until this point, I am now level 5 and I was always stuck to do the mission, so this is the first time I am finally free to explore whatever I want. I start exploring the game menus, the first thing that I do, of course, is just rename my character. There are events going on, there are free gadgets to open, so basically I'm just exploring everything and doing everything that I can, <laughs> claiming every free stuff that I can. So I will just continue my missions and quests, of course, there are some bosses here and there, but nothing out of ordinary. Let's be real, I'm level 5 and at this early in the game there is nothing that is supposed to be hard, but don't worry, this will change soon. Even though the early game is easy, I don't want to take risks, I just want to power up all my Pokemon so that the early game just goes flawlessly, at least with the least amount of stops possible. Oh, and there's this gacha where you can earn tickets to open the gacha for free as long as you play the game. Basically, each time that I would complete the mission on the map, I would earn a ticket, so I would just wait to get 10 tickets and open this gacha over here. That gacha will actually be my best friend later. Oh, and by the way, level 12, I unlock quests, daily quests. This is where the real grind begins. Oh, and by the way, speaking of quests, they reward you with the XP, and I got level 13 out of it. And level 14, apparently. <laughs> unlock the trainer, and apparently each trainer trainer just provides with different bonuses. There's a trainer for electric types, so I just need to find out how to get them because I'm really a fan of electric types. So there was I, focusing on completing my daily missions and with that I got level 15. And I unlock one of the first objectives that I had with this game, which is knowing the arena. Now on the arena I could just check how far the players are in terms of ranking and power, but one of the problems that I would have is that I started on the server one day late, almost two days late actually. As you can imagine, starting two days late on these kinds of games it's a huge deal, so I'm not going to try something crazy like top 10, but I'm going to do my my best. At this point I'm just grinding and grinding and look at that, all my Pokemons are already green tier and I'm happy. Later I achieved level 17 and I unlocked one of the funniest bosses that I've seen in a while, which is the Gold Guard. And it kinda makes sense, I don't know if this ever existed in the anime, but I, I just found it really funny. And basically the purpose of this boss is to give you gold according to the damage that you deal, but apparently you can only use specific Pokemon for this. Shortly after I unlocked some shoppings, I unlocked the mysterious black market, and I'll be honest, I was taking a look at this and I was like, I have no idea <laughs> what I should buy or what I should not buy. So I decided to save my diamonds, like my 
plan over here is to save my diamonds for the biggest and most expensive gacha that this game has. Because as I told you guys earlier, my plan is to understand the game and see if I can obtain myself a Raikou, so I am not going to spend too many diamonds on day one. I need to save up so that I understand what the heck is going on with the game and try to understand how can I obtain myself a legendary or at this point in the game I was wondering to myself how can I obtain a Pokemon because I'm basically just stuck with these four Pokemon and I'm just wondering like hello uh, where can I catch a Pokemon please? Okay, shortly after, level 19. Level 19, I unlock a new game mode that's basically a magic webcam, a magic camera that I just go around and I collect rewards. And apparently those rewards can be shards of Pokemons that you already own. <laughs> Okay, I'm basically re-watching my footage, right? And I'm just not going to lie, I was so dumb because I was walking around the city and I did not realize that I just had to click on the texts so that my character would just autopilot to the to the leads, I don't know. And since I only had Pikachu from the Pokemon on the list, the only Pokemon shards that I could earn would be Pikachu shards. Those Pikachu shards will be used for sure later because you can also use Pokemon shards to power up your own Pokemon. And you know what? Shortly after, one of my happiest moments on day one. Uh, okay, it's not one of my happiest, it's my happiest. I finally got a new Pokemon. I was like, God damn, finally, a new Pokemon. Even though it's a B tier, dude, I don't care. It's a fresh new Pokemon that I can add to my team. And at this point, I noticed that some of the gachas actually have a preview of what are the Pokemons that you can earn, while others that I noticed, like the most expensive one, only tells you like the popular legendary that is over there right now and does not show you much else. So I guess I gotta be lucky. I don't know. We will find out in a couple of days once I actually finally open 10 times of this biggest gacha over here. And of course, the first thing that I do after that is just power up my new boy, my new Esper. I'm not going to lie, day one, I still do not understand how to evolve my Pokemon to the next evolution, but I believe you need to have them at three stars. And to increase the stars of your Pokemon, you need shards, and to obtain shards, you need to be lucky in the gacha, or maybe there are some ways like this one over here in the store. I randomly bought a Manaphy shard, god knows for what reason, but well, uh, I'm a proud owner of one Manaphy shard right now. And I forgot to tell, I unlocked another feature called the gems, which apparently I can just use energy every day to get more Pokemon shards, which is awesome. I unlocked a new boss, similar to Persian, but this one rewards you with the XP and not gold. And I also unlocked a little bit of a Pokemon quiz, it's a very basic quiz, but I swear, this has a ranking, it's according to how fast you can actually answer those questions. And and if you want to compete in the ranking, you need to be super fast, and sometimes it can get confusing, so good luck. On this day one, I got myself rank 3 over there, but I promised myself I will get rank 1 on this challenge. And it was finally time, right? This was bound to happen, like two hours later in the game, and I finally, finally, I feel a little bit stuck. And I thought to myself, well... I'm just going to have a quick break, I'm just going to have dinner and stuff and I'll come back and I'll defeat this challenge, but I'll be honest, I was very tired and I decided to call it a day. And this was it, day one. You can see my Pokemon's power, my total team power was around 34,000 and I can't wait to show you day two because I will play the game and progress as much as possible until I cannot progress anymore. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll see you guys on the next video.